Hi all. Our instructive game today will also be my first game of the season. I'm going to have the theme here of play of on both sides of the board. So to demonstrate this theme, my game from last night, I was playing against a women's international master called Pratiba. So it was Barnet versus St Albans Chess Club. We were playing away at their place. I kicked off with E4. She played E6, the French defence. And I thought I'd go in for one of Watson's dangerous weapons lines with the knight coming to F3, the D knight coming to F3. So after knight FD7, F4, C5. White has an aggressive pawn structure, but uh, the problem is maintaining it. So I played C3, and after knight C6, here is where I used the novelty move, knight D F3. So um, this is far less common than... Um, Knight F, Knight G F3, I think. So these knights can actually be quite dangerous. This one coming to H3 later. So after Queen B6, I played A3. I didn't want any CDs and, and Bishop B4 checks. So she took on D4, which I didn't mind. Just released some of the tension in the center, and played A5. I thought this was a bit passive by Black, because it's allowing me to kind of um, maintain my structure. Uh, my only problem is, is Black's undermining with f6, so I'm going to try and neutralise now this diagonal. I play the idea of knight h3 to f2. I think it's quite a novel idea, but it seems quite logical. So after bishop d3, this d pawn's immune because of the bishop g6 check. I'll just quickly show you. So bishop g6 check. So, um, so everything's fine, okay at the moment. Um, bishop e7, now I played knight f2. So I thought this was quite an interesting idea. She castled, I castled, and now king h8. So here I think, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay out of the opening. So I play bishop c2, perhaps with the idea of queen d3 to provoke um, either f5 or g6. She played now queen c7. And yeah, I just thought black's position is quite passive here. Uh, I just thought I'd strengthen my position a little bit more by playing king h1 to avoid any kind of nasties on this diagonal. After b5, I could see black trying to play on the queen side and maybe bishop a6 and b4 later. And this bishop might be uncomfortable on the c-line. So I kind of prepare, actually. I take more time out of any attacking ideas to just reinforce my position a little bit more with bishop e3. And after knight b6, I was thinking, do I really want to allow this knight c4 and having to move the bishop back and then allowing b4? which could be quite destructive, you know, especially all that pressure on, on, the, on the A3 pawn. So let's have a look. Say I did something a bit um, active here, instead of what I did play, which was B3. Say I went in for the attack. So knight h4, f takes e. Ah, uh, this, this would be good. Queen h5, according to Ribko anyway, e4. So here, there's knight takes e4. That's pretty damn dangerous, because of this diagonal. So if bishop takes g5, knight g5, g6, queen, now here, either queen takes h4, or even stronger, bishop takes g6. So this would have been fine for me. So I'm regaining that um, that piece anyway, which I've just sacrificed. Or is it? No, bishop takes g5, f takes. So here, although a piece down, Rivka really likes the white position, if we go back, knight h4 would have been interesting as well. I was playing more cautiously. I played b3. Okay. And now after b4, I, I played a4. And I was quite happy that at least this knight's not coming to c4. So after bishop a6, I didn't mind rook g1. I thought that would be useful later if black plays f5 and I've got g4. I'm trying to rip open that g line. So rook a c8. And I was getting a bit concerned. You know, black's playing quite simply now just to increase the pressure on the c-file. Will I be able to um, get anything on the king side? You know, I was a bit uh, concerned, actually. Simple moves by black, queen d7, simply preparing to double up rooks, which um, there's nothing really I can do about. And it's a bit uncomfortable for me to do anything here. You know, there's a lot of pressure. So, after knight h3, rook c7, I did, though, play knight h4 to at least provoke something on the king side. I've got a threat now, potentially, of queen h5. So now she played f5. And 
my first thought, yeah, I, I might be worse now um, because Black's just doubling on the C file and what am I doing with these silly knights on h4 and h3? But anyway, after knight g5, I find knight g5, I think, okay, that, that's okay, at least I don't have to move that back. And um, she takes now on g5, fg, and now plays g6. So I realise that this bishop's actually quite hopeless now. It's not really a useful attacking piece. I'm not really going to blast this line at all with g4. So, different plan. Let's play on the other side of the board. So I came up with the move bishop d3. And things started to, to, to turn nice now for me. After bishop takes, queen takes, I've got the potential of now queen b5. And all of a sudden, white's better again, according to Rivka. So uh, Rivka likes it as well. So after knight b8, this I think this is an inaccuracy. Um... I take and just play queen b5. And now black's really going downhill after this rook c8 because al although she's threatening to infiltrate with queen c3, I just play knight f3 and that stops it because if queen c3, rook c1 and takes takes check, knight g1. So I've got rook c1 resource now and I'm, I'm menacing you know these pawns on the queen side. So the whole plan of attack has, has completely shifted from the king side to the queen side. So after knight 8d7, I notice how these knights, they're kind of stumbling around, they haven't got any um, squares. So I snatch that pawn, and there isn't much counterplay now at all. Rook c1, and I'm getting a dream position, just with simple positional moves. It just, you know, had to be on the other side of the board, not, not the king side as originally um, it seemed. So here, I don't really want to allow any counterplay. Instead of queen takes b4, laying knight c4, which is also really good, I just play the calm bishop d2. And, you know, what is black able to do here? Not much. She plays rook c8, I take, and now I just take, queen takes b4, and I'm threatening now a5. These knights are completely hopeless. They're locked out of the position. They've got no squares at all. So I was delighted now. I just thought it was all over. You know, I, I'll make a, a square for my king. And, you know, even in the situation that if black ever got a queen to f4, if this bishop was not there, you know, I'd have king h1 and knight g1 at the very least. So I couldn't see any potential for a perpetual check here. So after queen c2, a5. And now, after knight c8, I thought, okay, how do I maximise black's um, tactical vulnerabilities here? Well, there's this past a pawn, that's a big advantage. These stumbling knights. But uh, queen b7, yeah, queen b7, it drives this knight back. And now another threatening move, which maybe I played a bit too quickly. But uh, my, my idea, basically, if king g 8s here, then bishop c5, and this knight's stranded. So um, so that would be hopeless. And so basically, after this bishop b4, she plays queen takes b3. And I don't really want... Well, a anything's good here. Even queen takes c8 is good, because after takes, then a6, that's decisive, the a pawn. I played something even stronger, though. I, I just played in this position, a6, leaving basically three unprotected pieces, because uh, bishop takes f8 is now threatened, because the queen's protected, so that, that queen would be attacked. So all of these like pieces are just unprotected. So she'd had enough. My first game of the season, I was I was pretty pleased here that uh, there wasn't much counterplay at all once that queenside attack got going. So let's have a look at that again. A French defence, and I played one of Watson's dangerous weapons ideas. So this knight df3. So these knights on the king side can be quite dangerous in some variations. And actually, was this an accuracy? Maybe. You know, EF is, is worth considering you know, at different points. But, um, you know, I think um, this this was perhaps overly cautious then, if um, knight h4 is interesting. But what can black play here? Maybe just f5 instead of fe. That that would be much better. And and now this queenside attack is, is getting really dangerous. So b4, I don't really like this. Um... If, can I answer this with a4? Knight c4. And the knight, if it comes to a3, for example, that then or knight takes... Oh, knight takes e3. 
bishop a6. This doesn't look as good as the game because of other possibilities like knight a3, f b3. So maybe what I played was okay just to play b3 here to try and stifle this counterplay on the queen side and then simply, you know, go into those light squared weaknesses quite unexpectedly on the queen side with this peculiar bishop d3. But it is positionally getting rid of a bad piece. So once I was able to get in on the queen side, I was picking up that a5 pawn. And the c-file was just lovely. Picking up two pawns, black's had it. There's, there's no, no counterplay here. The knights are just stumbling around without any squares. So after a6, that was it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.